Melbourne's Nine News Local. Good evening, I'm Joe Hall. Businesses north of the Murray are welcoming financial support to help them recover from restrictions placed on both sides of the border since May. Some business owners say the funding doesn't go far enough and are asking for more targeted support. Jack Nioff reports. New South Wales businesses in the border bubble have been hit hard. Christmas was the worst. New Year's Eve was a disaster. We got 88 rooms, 77 of them packed up and went home. The place was just like a morgue. Stephen says a lack of travel between the states has decimated business north of the Murray. In the last 12 months, we'd be 25% down. Accommodation providers in New South Wales were overlooked for support because they were in the border bubble. We know that businesses on the New South Wales border side really rely on Melbourne and Victorian traffic or our consumers. So when that was taken away from us with Victorian lockdowns, we kind of fell through the cracks of that government support. After months of campaigning from the business community, that has changed. The New South Wales government now expanding grants of up to $10,000 to the border bubble. The application is simple through Service New South Wales. And Aubrey Business Connect is also calling for more targeted support. It says while every bit helps, many businesses will need more to survive any future restrictions. And we'll certainly continue to advocate uh, for them. For a business of this size, it's probably not even a day's revenue to us. While it's all appreciated, it's not much. If you had a smaller business, uh, you know, a cafe or something, you're getting seven or ten thousand dollars. That would help you a lot. Jack Nyhoff, Nine News. Regional Victorian airports and travel agents say they're devastated by the lockdowns across Australia and are facing more mass cancellations. For many, it means no source of income during the busy school holiday period, a time when they cash in on family trips interstate. Isabel Quinlan reports. It's peak hour here at Bendigo Airport, but there are no planes or passengers in sight, as the industry again faces a blow with the rest of the country now in a hard lockdown. People are not confident to book that holiday to doesn't matter where, Queensland, West Australia. Regional airports are expected to see a drop from 70% to less than 50% of interstate travellers for these school holidays. For many towns, vital tourism. It's an incredible um, important link that uh, we have to these regional centres. And like I said, if uh, people aren't confident to book, uh, then that really you know, dampens for quite a period of time. Travel agents have also felt the brunt of these lockdowns, labelling the current state of the industry as diabolical. Many of them have lost 80 to 90 per cent of their income. Each lockdown is devastating overall, as both for an agent and for the customers. Um, I guess 12 months ago, we thought it would be all over and done with by now. Jackie Coots is one of those travellers. She has now had to cancel five interstate trips since the pandemic started due to snap lockdowns. It's really frustrating and, and disappointing. Um, it's sort of got to the point now where you sort of think, you know, is it is it worthwhile even trying to book to go somewhere? Industry leaders in both the aviation and travel sector are calling for governments to create a better plan when it comes to snap lockdowns so they are not left with mass cancellations and no source of income. Once we're at 70, 80 percent vaccination rate, if the states agree that, you know, we accept that once we're at that stage, there'll be no more lockdowns. Isabel Quinlan, Nine News. Environmental advocates along the Gippsland Lakes have raised concerns over the EPA approving an extra 232 megalitres of water into the Latrobe River following the floods. They fear it will destroy the environment and impact on fish populations. Siobhan McKenna reports. The picturesque Gippsland Lakes are jewel in Victoria's environmental and tourism crown. The Gippsland Lakes are a nursery for most fish species, most aquatic and marine species. Local fishing groups fear flood water from two major mines in the Latrobe Valley released into their catchment could pose a threat to fish stocks like it did when similar flooding occurred. The last event was in 2012 and the effect of that was to destroy the sandworm beds in the Gippsland Lakes. The EPA has granted approvals for the Yalorn Power Station to release 232 megalitres per day into the Latrobe River to ease pressure and allow repair works on their cracked mine wall to commence, as well as allowing water from the old Hazelwood mine pondage to be released into the same river. EPA thinks that those risks are quite negligible compared to the risks that, that we're weighing it up against. The Gippsland Lakes and Recreational Fishing Alliance says the EPA's imposed conditions of self-monitoring for the mining companies could leave their waterways vulnerable. The approvals require them to undertake monitoring to show that they're achieving the, the 
uh, conditions within the approval. The EPA seems to act more as a facilitator for this process rather than a regulator. Energy Australia says they're working with the government, regulators and unions from a health and safety perspective. Siobhan McKenna, Nine News. Osnet has revealed its preferred corridor for the controversial Western Victoria Transmission Network project. The proposed 190-kilometre network of power lines will go from Bulgana north of Ararat to Melbourne. The proposed route will cut through towns like Warborough and Torello, where residents have objected to the project. We looked at things like cultural heritage, um, land use and planning constraints, um, biodiversity um, factors that we need to consider, um, po points of interest and in areas that have been identified by community members through our consultations to date. Uh, yeah, so a number of factors have influenced the selection of this corridor. Residents and farmers living within the planned corridor have raised concerns around the impact on farming and irrigation in the area. There have previously been campaigns to get the lines installed underground instead. The Victorian Government will help buy safer cars for a thousand young Victorians in regional areas. Six of the ten 18 to 25 year olds killed this year were driving cars more than 10 years old. Grants of up to $5,000 are being considered but are yet to be finalised. Still ahead in Nine News Local, the riding program helping veterans overcome trauma. And a young cancer sufferer receives a special hello from his footy idols. The Wallabies are coming. Rugby's greatest rivalries. Live on Nine and Stan Sport. Finely tuned engines. Well travelled engines. Amplified premium fuels are formulated to handle our tough conditions, so you have peace of mind wherever our fuels take you. Ampol, Australia's own. If you're into fixing your car or 4x4, online auto parts can help you keep it on the road for a hell of a lot less. Become a Super Saver member for free and save even more. Get the right fit at the right price, fast. Onlineautoparts.com.au At Harvey Norman, save over $600 on the LG 65-inch OLED Smart TV. Hurry in for bonus delivery and installation on this king-size Sony Google TV. Plus bonus gift card up to $1,000 when you buy on interest-free. On now. Australians love blue. We even call our redheads blue. And our best mate. When you bet same game multis, you bet with blue bet. Now available on all AFL games. Don't chase your losses. Walk away. Gamble responsibly. You might not think it, but I've lived in some unique places. Like 189 days aboard a yacht, including one scary time overboard. If you're like me and where you call home changes over time, it's good to know that AP has different home insurance options to choose from. Get a quote today. Call Apia on 135050. All in one place. Nine.com.au Tales of the unsung heroes of the Black Summer bushfires in East Gippsland have been captured in a children's picture storybook. Local author Kylie Miller says the book's positive imagery is a way to help children affected by the disaster process their experiences. Siobhan McKenna again. We're here with Kylie Miller, one of the authors of Heroes of Black Summer. Kylie, what motivated you to start this book? My co-author Craig Sheather came to visit my fire affected property in Wairiwa and he actually suggested it. We decided to do a book that told some of the happy stories. It does feature some of the unsung heroes of that time. Why was it important to shine a light on what they did? I think everyone knows 
how many heroes there are involved in fighting a fire. The CFA is amazing and keeps us safe every summer. But what we noticed after the fire was that there were all of these heroes, the people that went out, rescued wildlife, hammered nesting boxes onto trees, donated goods, set up pay it forward schemes. This book is about and for them. Were there any particular ones in here that were favourites or standouts in the book? Uh, look, I think it's very hard to go past the two teenagers from Bansdale Secondary College who lost their home in the fires in Sarsfield and then signed up as volunteers for Blaze Aid. <laughs> that one's amazing. And so it is a children's picture storybook. Why was it important to have something like this to help them deal with the trauma of the event? We had advice from a clinical psychologist that it can help children to process the trauma of a natural disaster by, by hearing the happy stories, by being able to talk about it. And so this book has been published with support from a One Good Community grant through Gippsland Primary Health Network, which is designed to build resilience in communities affected by, in our case, fire and also drought. And I understand some of the proceeds from this are being funnelled back into the community. Talk us through that. Absolutely. As part of the contract with Australian Geographic, Craig and I have negotiated to donate 500 copies of the book to fire impacted communities. Uh, we're also donating 25% um, of the proceeds to the Gippsland Emergency Relief Fund, which does and continues to do amazing work with emergency in Gippsland. Well, thanks for your time, Carly. The book will be available at bookstores and online from tomorrow. A new program which is helping younger veterans return to civilian life has been given a $40,000 funding boost. It's putting returned servicemen and women in the saddle as a way of helping them make the transition. Reporter Jack Nyoff caught up with co-founder Mark Matheson. While one younger veteran commits suicide each week and a new program using horses is looking to help overcome that, I'm joined by the co-founder of Mountain Missions, Mark. What's the program looking to do? So we've got two programs, but the one that we've just recently received some federal funding for is to um, help contemporary veterans to reform their connections with their significant others. So using uh, horses as a, a means of um, relearning basic communication skills and, and how to connect with empathy. We're building a program to help those contemporary veterans to, to reconnect with their spouses and move forward in their lives. Recently received over $40,000 for this program. How significant is that money? Very significant, and it will certainly help us to, uh, to form a pilot program from which we can collect some initial data um, and then hopefully be able to, to prove the concept. It's a bit of a radical, innovative concept in mental health um, to use uh, horses and to work outdoors, so we're really hoping to, that the data comes through and supports our program. Horses don't have an agenda, uh, so, so they are innocent in a way and, and the forming of a relationship is a very genuine relationship. So if you pair up with a horse, you know that it's trusting and accepting of you and will give you lots of instant feedback. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining me. It looks like a fantastic program. We wish them all the success in the future. And of course, if you need help, help is available. You can contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. Thank you, Jack. A young Bendigo boy who has been diagnosed with the rare cancer Hodgkin's lymphoma has received a special video message from his footy heroes. The Melbourne Football Club sent words of encouragement and support to five-year-old Charlie Doherty as he prepares for the biggest fight of his life. Isabel Quinlan again. It's a message Melbourne Football Club fan Charlie Doherty could only dream of receiving. Uh, I heard you going through a tough time, mate, uh, but just want to let you know we're supporting you. All the boys are right behind you. As the five-year-old takes on the fight of his life, battling Hodgkinson's lymphoma, a rare cancer that attacks the white blood cells. He's the first person to be diagnosed with the condition in Victoria this year. But he is not alone in this fight. Just want to send him my love, support and strength. Although it's an emotional roller coaster for the family as they start the process of tackling the disease, it's all done with a smile and a few jokes to get through the process. Yeah, today he had his pet scan. He didn't find any um, pets in it, but... Uh, it's not about pets. Oh, no. A GoFundMe page has been set up to support the family who was expected to stay in Melbourne for the next four to six months. They are overwhelmed with support. Thank you everybody for the support and messages That's from Charlie. Isabel Quinlan, Nine News. Stay with us up next in sport. Bendigo's Jack Haig crashes in the third leg of the Tour de France. Sunday, July 11, Sophie Munn brings two worlds together. All new Beauty and the Geek, only on 9.
ending the financial year with monster deals. Buy three, get one free. Up to $100 instant cashback and 20% off selected tyres on top tyre brands. Drive an SUV, 4x4 or passenger car? Make your car awesome with up to 20% off this huge range of top wheel brands. For great deals and service, come and see me, Rob Moyle, and my team at Bob Jane T-Mart's Bendigo. We'll look after you. Winter can be so brutal. Here, there is no middle ground, more like Middle Earth. Yet on we march, battling the elements. But when we're done, how good does it feel to come home to the warmth of a Eureka wood heater? See how good a Eureka really is at your local wood heating specialist, because winter just keeps coming. All ready to go. Coles Car Insurance is full of nice surprises. Like a lifetime guarantee on authorised repairs. So you can get back to what really counts. Coles. Value the Australian way. Renovating or building? You can save 20% off your next big project at Highgrove Bathrooms end of financial year sale. That's 20% off store wide. Be quick. Sale ends June 30. Only at Highgrove Bathrooms Bendigo Ballarat Shepparton. If you have osteoporosis, keep checking in with your GP. If you're untreated and you've already had a fracture, you're five times more likely to have another fracture within a year. Call your doctor today to stay treated and stay protected. What's your shampoo made of? New Garnier Fructose Hair Food Shampoos and Conditioners. From 96% natural origin. Yes, vegan. No silicon. Yes, recyclable. Nourishing, smoothing, hydrating and volumising by Garnier. Naturally. All in one place. Nine.com.au Bendigo's Jack Haig has missed out on completing this, his Tour de France campaign after crashing in the third leg, breaking his collarbone and suffering from a concussion. Isabel Quinlan caught up with Bendigo cycling expert Noel Sens about what this means for Jack's Olympics debut. Noel Sens, Bendigo cycling expert, joins me now. Noel, it's been a bit of a disappointing end to Jack Haig's Tour de France campaign. Yeah, it's really terrible. He was doing so well. He was in sixth place, but he was one of the favourites to be up on the podium. It ended in disaster. He's got a broken collarbone and concussion. And with the Olympics coming up very soon, it's a huge disappointment for Jack. Do you think he'll still be able to, um, I guess, go to the Olympics? He'll get a plate put in there and have a quick recovery. He'll probably get back on the bike on an indoor trainer. And he'll go to the Olympics, I reckon, unless there's repercussions from the bad concussion that he got. And it was also the third leg that he sort of had that sort of fatal crash. Tell us a little bit about that third leg and why it's, I guess, so difficult. Well, it was just really dangerous because they had narrow roads coming into this town and they had like 200 riders jammed onto a road that wasn't much wider than a small country road. And everybody's jostling for the front, trying to be up there to keep out of trouble. And that's where the trouble started, was just jammed up. And um, I think they need to change the way they finish a little bit. And the Tour de France anyway is, um, I guess, dangerous in itself because a lot we see a lot of crashes throughout the Tour. Is there, is there a reason why this sort of happens? Yes, yeah, desperation in the first part of the Tour. Later on when the mountains come and the time trials come, everyone's going to be broken up on time. At the moment they're all wanting to try and win the Tour de France or keep their team leader up there and it's, and it's just desperation. And they go for gaps that aren't there and that's what happens. And people walk out with signs and different things. A bit closer to home, some of our junior cyclists were heading off to the Nationals. Bit of a disappointing end for them as well? Yeah, tragic. Some of them are already there and all their bikes are up there. So yeah, a bit of a mess. This, um, for one little girl, she's had missed out on four championships now. One road championship and three track titles. So they haven't actually been called off forever. They've just been postponed until later in July. But it's so sad. These kids that are up there, what do you do now? You're isolated up there and all the bikes are up there. They can't train. Can mean a lot to a little kid, sort of 12 to 16 years of age. Thank you so much, Noel, for joining me. And I really appreciate the update on the cycling. The Ovens and Murray League says it's closely monitoring COVID-19 developments on both sides of the border. New restrictions in New South Wales means border bubble fans will now have to wear masks and social distance at matches while in the state. The league is confident fans will easily adjust to the restrictions.
Head in Nine News local Gavin has all your weather details. The Wallabies are coming. Rugby's greatest rivalries. Live on Nine and Stan Sport. Special K. Rise with us. Rise with protein for muscle. Rise with iron for energy. Set goals, then kick them. Special K, powering you. Oh, Andy can't stop Ashwin. Loan application time. Applying for a loan isn't as hard as you think. With an easy online application, ANZ GoBiz is the loan without the groan. Search ANZ GoBiz. IGA's Market Day is here. One day specials Thursday, July 1. Makona Coffee 200 gram varieties $9.50 each, half price. And Western Star Spreadable 500 gram varieties $4 each. July 1 only at IGA. Millions of men are using an anti dandruff shampoo they don't need. Because their problem isn't dandruff, it's dry skin. The new Alpacine Hybrid Caffeine Shampoo. With moisture to combat a dry scalp and caffeine as fuel for the hair. At Harvey Norman, save $150 on the Samsung Galaxy S21, now $1,098. Or the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G, save $500. Plus, bonus gift card up to $1,000 when you buy on interest free. On now. Thanks, Victoria. Your hard work means restrictions are easing. To stay safe, remember, check in everywhere, every time. No more than 15 visitors to your home per day. Limit outdoor gatherings to 50 people. Limit weddings and funerals to 300 people. Wear a fitted face mask indoors. Get vaccinated as soon as you're eligible and at the first sign of any symptoms, get tested. For the latest updates, go to coronavirus.vic.gov.au. Authorised by the Victorian Government, Melbourne. Go local, that's better. Echuca in Rochester, Better Home Living will have your house feeling like a home. From bedding to kitchen and, and a, a whole lot more. You'll find it all at Better. Better Home Living, Echuca and Rochester. Wake up to sleep at the 40 Winks Stock Take Sale and save up to 50% off on leading brand mattresses, bedroom furniture, kids' beds and more. But hurry, the 40 Winks Stock Take Sale ends Sunday. 40 Winks, serious about sleep. All in one place. Nine.com.au Now here's Gavin Morris with the weather details. Good evening. Thank you, Joe. Showers streaming down from the north, crossing the border, mostly hugging the mountain areas, but a few sneaking in over the north country throughout today. Relatively mild conditions, all thanks to that northerly influence. There is a lot of moisture that has built up right throughout eastern Australia, thanks to this big onshore influence during recent days. And now all of this frontal activity coming in off the Great Southern Ocean is going to tap into that moisture, and we're going to see plenty of rain unfold right through throughout the east and more cold air is on the way as well. So there's that big rain band. That shower activity that's been sneaking down from the north crossing the border will continue to do so overnight and throughout tomorrow. Mostly again affecting the north country, parts of central Victoria and the northeast. And then that front will approach and that is going to drop temperatures as we move towards the weekend. So taking a look at tomorrow's forecast right throughout the Mallee, we're going to top out about 16 to 17 degrees. It is going to be a little bit cloudy, generally fine. Showers from this are going to be hard to come by. Uh, you can see most locations have got a millimetre in the forecast, just in case. There could be just a little light drizzle patch that will move through, but generally maxing out around the mid-teens for the Wimmera and throughout the southwest. Ballarat. Uh, 12 degrees, the mere top, and a greater chance of seeing a shower, I'd say, around Bendigo as we move towards central Victoria. That's where we'll have some more of those showers isolated, just streaming down again from the north because it's going to be a northerly influence. Again, despite all of the cloud cover and a little bit of wet weather being dragged down with that, temperatures are still going to be relatively mild, maxing out about 14 to 16 degrees there for Melbourne. Mid-teens uh, galore right throughout uh, most of West Gibsland. East Gippsland and uh, temperatures there just a little bit milder there uh, towards the coastal areas into the mid to higher teens. Rain for the Alpine areas. Good night. Thanks, Gavin. And that's Nine News Local for this Wednesday. I'm Joe Hall. From all the team, thank you for watching. We leave you now with pictures of some of the stories we've covered over the past four years.
Leaving the courtroom, Miss Holt said she regretted her actions. Definitely. Crossing the highway before becoming airborne, narrowly missing a herd of sheep and mowing down anything that gets in his way. Thought they were dreaming when a stray tyre came flying into their building during a shift on Friday night. Police surround the home of a 44-year-old man. We just want anyone to know that knows anything, little or small, to tell the police. A dramatic end to a highway pursuit. Surrounded by police, a man is arrested on the roof of a residential shed. A series of bangs. And in the blink of an eye, plumes of dust now fill the void where Hazelwood's chimney stood for over 50 years. Cassandra was able to fulfil Alex's final wish and donate his organs. His heart went to the Royal Children's Hospital to save the life of a child. <laughs> a one-hour manhunt comes to a dramatic end. Enrolments have dropped from seven to just three. Mr. Anne, could you help me please? It's easier for the teachers when we don't have to wait to go down the slide. A wall of flames on either side as embers spray down in Koryong. When they came, we've got nothing to feed them. Today flying the Nine News crew to Malakuta in a helicopter. There was an air of uncertainty in Ballarat as Weir's empire began to collapse. Employees from the infected abattoir have been seen arriving throughout the day on foot and in their cars. Police and Australian Defence Force personnel will man the New South Wales Victorian border. The enormous joint operation deemed necessary after a spike in coronavirus cases in Melbourne. This is just going to be a nightmare. A COVID outbreak has placed South Australia into lockdown. Victorian health officials are now ramping up testing to stop any infection spreading from our border neighbours via the highways. Watching, waiting, counting down what could be the last of stage three restrictions. It's a massive thing. It is such good news. Uh, I am so, so pleased and proud of every single regional Victorian. Her great-granddaughter Dolly is back in her arms. Hello, beautiful. Now, after several weeks in lockdown and several strict visits from afar, the two lovebirds were reunited. I've hungered for your touch. Patrons can remove them once they're seated in their group. It's a small price to pay for a freshly poured pot. Life will soon return to some sort of normality for residents living on the Victoria New South Wales border. It's probably just playing on the ground makes me feel like I'm on the MCG. It was abandoned. Possum, yeah, thought that, that Molly was her mother. For the 2022 Commonwealth Games. It's the 100th anniversary of the three-handled loving cup design. Get it, Jill. Hey, look at that. She might take my spot in the back line. That was pretty good. Every stall here today at Cobram Federation Park is run by volunteers. 13-year community campaign to have the service based in the southwest. Have you missed this weather? Uh, no, I can't say I have. While some of the other younger dogs on larger properties in the competition, there are millions of combinations and no two souls are the same. Requires a high degree of coordination and balance. They're heading to Tralga next to put smiles on the faces of Latrobe Regional Hospital patients. Hey, with little puppies like Marvel getting their first taste of training and life on the farm. And while some couples give each other flowers, other couples give each other giant transformer statues. From Ballarat, little residents. Isn't that right, Santa? That's right, young fellas.